what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the redmi note 7 pro and today in this video i'm going to be showing you the latest android 12 port this port is actually based from the pixel 4a earlier i did couple of videos on the beta 2 and beta 1 of the android 12 those ports were based on pixel 5 but this specific port is based on pixel 4a and of course i'll put all the download links and the flashing guide in the description box below do not worry you just flash the rom as you do like any other rom so i have used the latest orange fox stable recovery with that i have flashed the rom and i have flashed the fcrypt disabler v3 for the redmi note 7 pro and after that i just rebooted and of course before that i wiped cache talvik system data and vendor so that's how easy it is to flash this particular port over here or the rom you may call that's how you can flash it and the experience over here is really good let me actually explain so this is how the home screen looks like over here because i did customize it a little bit by the way this is again the beta 3 of android 12 over here for the redmi note 7 pro let me actually show you the file which i have used this is the file this says pixel 4a a12 beta 3.1 for violet and the file size over here is about 1.68 gb so yeah about 1.7 gb this is the rom file so let me explain this particular rom over here yes my google app data backup did work super fine no issues with that now one of the most interesting features that i have seen right away after flashing the rom is that the like completely new setup wizard so i do have some screenshots over here i do not have a video recording of that but yes the setup wizard definitely look amazing in my opinion and they do have a lot more bigger fonts and they do have a lot more bigger icons definitely it looks different so very easy to set up and i did complete the setup over here of the like latest android 12 beta 3.1 and this is how right now it looks the quick setting panel you can get by just swiping down like this and to the left of the home screen we still have the google's discover page as you can see Swiping up gets you to the app drawer. You do have the suggestion panel over here, which I have disabled. By the way, this is the pixel launcher that I am using. And again, the widgets and stuff, everything is working fine. But this particular widget is from the Android 12 widget app. I'll list it below in the description. Do not worry, but you don't get these kind of widgets yet. Let me actually show you what widgets you get. So you still have this analog clock. By the way, I'm using this Android 12 clock widget. And with that, as you can see, you are gonna get these kind of like clock widgets. You can apply any of them whatever you want to i'll list this particular app in the description you can download it from play store now if you're wondering what's new over here just check out the google app icons over here that you will see it's different like the google photos app the gpa and the youtube app then the messaging and the phone and we also have the chrome app then the play store the google keep and this google home app too has a different kind of look over here well it depends on the theme so from the settings, let me actually go into this wallpapers and styles. And this is where you can change the whole UI theme over here. So if you want to change the default wallpaper, by the way, this wallpaper I'm using is a default wallpaper over here. And let me actually show you, you can change the wallpaper by just tapping on this change wallpaper. And from here, if you go into this come alive section, you can download these live wallpapers. Also, there is this leaving universe wallpapers. You should be familiar with these because these are like old kind of pixel wallpapers you can download them over here it shows this download icon whatever you want to download you can and we have more wallpapers over here but let me go back we have this wallpaper colors so your whole ui accent color like this particular accent color is depending on my current wallpaper but you can also choose basic colors like these blue green and the like violet kind of color and a chocolate kind of color is there and we have this like wallpaper colors it will depend on the wallpaper pretty much like your whole ui accent color and there is this themed icons so if you enable this themed icons then only you will get these kind of icons let me actually show you if i disable them right now and if i go into the home screen okay so it takes a little bit time but as you can see the old icons are back so yeah that's how you can switch to the newer icons so currently as you can see the themed icon are not showing up so i'll just disable them for the time being but yeah that's how the icons will look if you enable that themed icons now let me just enable the dark theme so this is how the dark theme looks like again the themed icon did not appear yet that's how it is and this is how the dark theme looks like of course and everything the whole ui changes to dark and if i even if i go into the settings currently let me just go into the normal settings as you can see in the dark mode this is how the settings panel looks like by the way if you are wondering how the volume panel looks this is how the volume panel looks like right now you can tap here to get the full volume panels and here you can increase or decrease the volume just like this and if you tap here you can go into the vibrate silent or the ring over here like you can enable ringer from right here 
So yeah, this is how the volume panel looks like. Talking about the quick settings panel, this is how it looks like and we still have this like build date over here or the build number as you can see, it shows 12 and SPB3 and some more numbers are showing up over here. So yeah, pretty much this is the beta 3 and you can edit and add multiple toggles from here as you can see there are a plethora of toggles that you can edit and add. Let me actually show you what toggles that I have added. So we have this internet toggle then the Bluetooth. Now one thing that I have been noticing over here in Android 12, if you tap here you can't really disable the Wi-Fi right away. You have to click on this turn off Wi-Fi then only it will turn off your Wi-Fi and when it's turned off just notice how the like icon looks of the network. It just shows that there is no internet kind of thing. Internet shows like a question mark. So yeah whenever you're not connected to a network it shows like this. I don't have a sim card in the device so I can't really show you the network kind of signal bar over here. So if you tap here you can just enable the turn on Wi-Fi kind of thing. So right now I'm connected to my Wi-Fi again. So let me show you some more toggles like the Bluetooth toggle and even over here you have to like go into it and you can just search for any particular like Bluetooth device that you have. Bluetooth should be working fine. Also the flashlight is working totally fine. No issues with that. Then we have the airplane mode and we have the auto rotate, the battery saver, the dark theme and also we have the screen recorder. With that you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time. No issues whatsoever with that. Now let me show you the other toggles like hotspot, do not disturb, the data saver. Also the night light is working super fine here, no issues. The nearby share is there and we also get this home controls. So you can turn on your smart lights if you have some smart lights in your home. As you can see, you just noticed some light over there. So yeah, you can turn off or turn on any kind of smart light that you have in your house. And there is this alarm over here. So if you tap here, as you can see, you can get into this alarm kind of setting up option. So these things are there and we also have this like extra dim feature. If you want to make your screen more dim, like if you are lowering your brightness and even then if you feel like it's not dim enough, then you can use this extra dim. It makes your screen a little bit more dim. So yeah, very handy feature and also we have this mic access and camera access. Well, I tried this camera access but it's not quite working in my opinion because when I disabled it, even when I have opened Google camera, the camera still opens. So these two functions may not be working properly. Now here we have the power menu and if you tap here in the quick setting panel, we still get this power menu over here. So if you tap here again, we have the emergency then the power off and the restart option. So this is very handy that we get the power menu in the like quick setting panel itself. And we have the settings. So if you tap here, you get to the settings pretty much. Talking about the Android version section, we still have this Android version as Android 12 of course, but if you keep tapping on it, you get this Android 11's kind of logo over here still. And we have the security patch of July 5th, 2021. And the stock kernel is Azure Tone Diff Plus kernel. And here is the build number. By the way, this is the 27th July 2021 build, I think. And if you go into the system panel, we have these kind of system panel and there is a system updater, but I'm not really sure how it will work. But yes, you can check for updates from right here. And these fonts everywhere looks a lot bigger and bolder and they look really awesome in my opinion. Right now, let me show you this power menu section here. It shows this hold for assistant. So if I enable that and if I hold the power menu, it will bring the Google assistant as you can see. So that is really cool. Let me try. Okay. So right now, as you can see, I can swipe up from this corner still to get the Google assistant or I can say, Hey Google and that will bring you the Google Assistant. Also, if I just like hold the power button, that will as well bring the Google Assistant if you want to. So this is really helpful that the Google Assistant is working in multiple ways and we have the gestures. Here we get the prevent ringing, the one-handed mode. Yes, the one-handed mode has some added features. Let me actually show you. Here we have this kind of one-handed mode. You can just swipe down over here to get the one-handed mode kind of thing. And we have the show notifications. So right now, if I just do this, as you can see, it will give you the notification panel. So this is really helpful as you are noticing. And we also have this one handed mode shortcut. So if you are really not able to do this kind of things, so you can do one thing that you can turn it on. And that's when you can just tap here on this icon, like this icon will be there whenever you are browsing the settings and stuff. Okay, so right now if I tap here, if you're noticing, it brings the one handed friendly mode. So this is really amazing that the one handed friendly mode is quite like usable right now.
The quickly open camera is there but as you can see right now even if it's turned on if I double press the power button it doesn't do anything. The quickly open camera might be broken. One more thing is that we have this system navigation gestures of course and here if I go into the settings of it we have the swipe to invoke assistant then we have the left edge right edge kind of customization then we have the three button navigation no two button navigation over here. And of course we still have the Gboard as the default keyboard here. Right now let's just jump into the security. Here we have the screen lock and if you go into the settings you can set this locks after like screen timeout over here you can set it to 30 minutes if you want to. Then the power button instantly locks. Yes I have assigned my fingerprints over here and there is no face unlock as of right now or no app lock still of course and this is pixel kind of port right here so you don't get any kind of customizations so don't even think about those. But let me show you this is how the lock screen looks like. It looks beautiful in my opinion and if you tap on the fingerprint scanner as you can see it unlocks and this is how fast the fingerprint scanner works. Let me try one more time. So just notice how fast it unlocks and it does this kind of animation if you look closely whenever you are unlocking. So this looks amazing in my opinion. Let me try with my other finger and just notice how fast the fingerprint scanner speed is. Definitely the lock screen looks amazing. It shows the date then the time and if you tap here the clock just like jumps around over here and if you swipe up you get to see the like pin entering section. Now here if you tap on any number the number becomes square for a second. Just notice how cool it looks. So yeah this is very good that like it shows this kind of animation in the pin entering area too. Android 12 pretty much has amazing kind of looking animation everywhere in the UI. I have installed this Google camera over here and yes it is working fine but it is quite laggy in my opinion if you are noticing the UI just lags around. So yeah no camera is present by default over here I am shooting this video on the Redmi K20 Pro by the way. So this is how it looks in 4K 60fps of course and yeah night side and stuff should be working fine. The camera UI is still laggy on the Redmi Note 7 Pro's like Android 12 Beta 3 that's how it is. This is the Gcam version 7.3 by Yonix and the version over here shows 2.5 for some reason. So yeah, I'll list it below in the description. Do not worry. Now let me open this camera again. If you are noticing, it will show this video or the camera using icon right there. And whenever you have some notifications, it will look like this and you can go to the history of your notification. It shows if the phone is silent and you can clear all just like this and then the notification panel will automatically close. And on the home screen, you can tap here to see the full weather. And it shows welcome to your pixel if you tap here let me see. So it shows the pixel tips right here. And in Google photos you get this original quality the storage saver and the express free backup. So yeah all these three settings you get in Google photos here. This is how the network settings looks like we have this airplane mode and stuff right here then we have the like Wi-Fi kind of settings then we have the notifications. Here we have the app settings, then the device app notification, conversation, bubbles and the notification on lock screen you can customize. Sensitive notification option is there and we have the height silent notification in status bar. Then we have allow notification snoozing, then the notification dot on app icon, then the blink light enhanced notification option is there for some reason. Let me go back in the battery settings. Now still in the battery settings we do have the battery percentage enabling option for the status bar. Okay so finally in the battery usage one thing is important is that we get to see the screen on time but where is it if you ask me. So if you scroll down we have the system usage for past 24 hours. If you tap here then only you will be able to see the screen usage. As you can see right now it shows the screen has used for 1 hour and 10 minutes. So yeah that's how you can see the screen on time over here and you can see the phone idle time and the like other apps that you have used. So that's how you get to see the screen on time. I don't have much storage left over here but still this is how the like storage panel looks like. Let me go back we have the sound and vibration and again this is how the media call etc volume you can customize and you can customize your phone ringtone and stuff. When you have your phone in general mode you can like actually customize this vibration and haptics. As you can see we have the vibrate for calls and the ring vibration notification vibration also the touch feedback is there and this touch feedback actually is working so if you swipe up like this you get a uh, haptic feedback over here. So yeah you can enable this to have the haptic feedback and stuff all over the UI. Let me scroll down we have the shortcut to prevent ringing then we have the default alarm sound then dial pad tones the screen locking sound charging sound charging vibration and also the touch sound is there and in the display settings we have the brightness level the adaptive or auto brightness. Then we have the lock screen kind of settings from here you can enable this wake screen for notifications 
and we have the screen timeout option and we have the screen attention too if you want to enable that then we have the dark theme of course you can enable it and you can schedule it from here as well the font size you can customize the display size you can customize the night light you can also schedule it and change the intensity of it then we have this colors option but it doesn't show anything from here and we have the auto red screen and we have this increased touch sensitivity and we have the double tap to wake and stuff so yeah let me go back from the display settings now so that's pretty much all that i wanted to show you guys we have also this safety and emergency then the other kind of stuff so now it's time i test the ram management of this particular rom and here i have opened a couple of apps as you can see and you can go to the split screen or something from here i guess let me show you okay so this play store you can go to the split screen with that and we have the free form then the pin option and the other options now we have the screenshot select option and if you go all the way to the left then only you can clear all the apps from here so right now let me just open chrome and as you can see it is still in memory now facebook okay so facebook is reloading kind of maybe is it yeah facebook did reload now play store yes play store still in memory youtube still in memory and just notice the animations how it appears from memory just notice how cool it looks okay so twitter i did not open earlier so i just opened it right now so let me just open it again and yeah it is still in memory every app looks like it is in memory so the memory management on android 12 gotta be really good so that's how i feel pretty much my first impressions are amazing memory management in android 12 beta 3 and if you're wondering about the performance benchmarks here are the n 2 and gigabyte score with a cpu stress test on this particular android 12 beta 3 IR Blaster over here is working super fine as you can see so IR Blaster is still not broken in Android 12 Beta 3. Sometimes when you enable and disable the dark theme it looks like this and as you can see right now I have the white theme enabled that's why it looks like this and yeah definitely it looks weird but maybe a reboot will fix it. Talking about safety net test as you are noticing the safety net does pass right out of the box so yes you can still use bank new apps right out of the box on this Android 12 Beta 3. That is an amazing thing in my opinion. Talking about DRM Info, it shows L1 over here. So the DRM Info stays L1 even in this Android 12 Beta 3. So you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime in this particular ROM without any issues. So what do I think about this Android 12 Beta 3 on the Redmi Note 7 Pro? I would say if you are someone who uses Pixel Experience ROMs and loves them, and if you don't need any customization and you definitely are an enthusiast who want to try Android 12 on your Redmi Note 7 Pro, you can definitely go for it and you will pretty much enjoy this particular like beta port on this Redmi Note 7 Pro. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Share this video with your friends if you want them to know about the Android 12 on the Redmi Note 7 Pro. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.